We welcome back <laughs> no. our panel. Who They continue to talk even when they're on TV. There you go. Bill McEwen, Ray Appleton, and Miguel Arias here. I want to start this lightning round, if you will. We've got a lot to get to because uh, the hot button issue this week was where Governor Newsom signed that new order that says students can now sleep in. Middle schoolers can now go to school at 8 o'clock, high schoolers at 8.30. You have kids. Uh, I don't think they're that in high school yet, right? Uh, I have a middle schooler, a middle schooler getting ready for high school, and I can tell you we can all use more sleep, especially the kids, so well, I'm fully supportive of it. That works well with your schedule, but now you got to change bus routines. You do. you got to change, for a lot of parents, work routines. Yeah. This isn't really conducive to a lot of people's routines. You know, we have and schedules. to we have to adjust all the time. You, we also adjust for the time change. You know, a couple of times a year. This is normal change, but the important part is that kids are going to be better rested to pay attention in class. Better rested, but also uh, they may want to stay up longer. Right. Not necessarily. You don't I mean, think this so? This is all predicated on three studies from the AMA, the American Pediatrics Association, and I think I forget the third. Mm -hmm. And it was a fascinating study. It was the American Academy of Pediatrics. Yeah, it, it was, and it was talked about how in pre-puberty and at puberty, how the biorhythms are different between adults and teens. I thought it was amazing, and it made sense to me. So I am somewhat supportive of this. And it's not so much about it's how late they stay miracle. up. It's a miracle. It's supportive <laughs> yeah, of Governor not, Newsom? Well, I'm supportive of the change. I couldn't oh, okay. support him on my last day on Earth. <laughs> okay, I'll just check it. <laughs> so we're, we're so another the miracle, I'm going to be to the right of Ray on uh, this. This is an example of nanny state, and it should be left to the local districts to decide. Well, I'll, I'll go along with that. Yeah, yeah, I think it should be a district decision. And that's what Bob Nelson yeah. wanted, the superintendent yeah. as well. But yeah. here's the reason why it's not. Times are typically negotiated with every single teacher's group. True. You want consistency across the state, especially when kids move from district to district, which is very routine in our cities. Well, we'll so see how I, that plays I'll out. rebut that by <laughs> we're going to have a lot of problems uh, early on, and the school districts are all going to have to spend more money on having arrival centers or preschool activities and those kinds of things. And the question will be, will it be worth it if the students really benefit from more sleep? And the other thing is, is that, and we'll punctuate on this, if when the new governor comes along, will he retract back to the old way? You never know, that could happen. Uh, we heard from Jerry Dyer and Mayor Lee Brand, um, and there is a bit of a confusion or uh, a lack of communication, if you will. Miguel, I'll let you weigh in on this. Uh, it seems that if Jerry Dyer becomes mayor, he says he will hire the next police chief. Well, but Lee Brand has said, I'm the mayor and I'm going to hire the next police chief. So what is it? Well, we only have one chief at a time, and that chief right now is Mayor Lee Brand, and he has a full power and authority, and I expect that he's going to utilize it. I think Chief Dyer uh, is going to be humble, like all of us are in political campaigns, and he'll have to understand and appreciate that he needs to wait his turn to have that opportunity. Ray, I, I'm surprised to hear Jerry say that. Um, I wasn't aware yeah. of the little controversy there. I've known Jerry since 1979. No. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I love him to death, but I don't think he's right on this one. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it seems peculiar, but Mayor Brand is, is a stickler on this, and he says it's going to be my decision. So he has to follow through because he had an opportunity to name a police chief, he went the interim route, mm -hmm. he talked about national search, but I think there's a complication here. I don't think that the national search is going to turn up a stronger field than what we had previously, and Mayor Brown Brand found that lacking. So even if he does name a chief, unless it's an eternal candidate that the next mayor can live with, but it may be a short term for the next chief. Real if quick. It's an at-will position, yeah. you know. Real quick, before we get to our last thing, real quick. Raise your hand if Jerry Dyer is right, it will be over in March. One person, huh? It'll go all the way to November. You know, the simple question is going to be, is the chief going to run Jerry Dyer on the Republican platform? If he does and plans to govern on the Republican platform, he's going to be surprised in March. Okay. That's not going to happen. I want to I turn to Can this. Can I add just quickly, it will depend on the two other relatively unknown candidates. Uh, traditionally, you know, they could get 5% of the vote or so. Uh, if that happens... Screw it up this, for everybody. Yeah, yeah. if that happens this <laughs> or time... Or make it more exciting. If that happens this time, whoever's in the lead uh, may fall short of that 50% plus one. 
I, I promised a lightning round, and here we go. Uh, turning to another law, Governor Newsom signed this week, allowing Californians living in the U.S. illegally to serve on government boards and banning arrests for immigration violations in courthouses across the state. It's a mouthful. Dreamers involved in this as well, but... Does this make any sense? It makes perfect sense right now. You don't, have to be, okay. you don't have to be a citizen to serve on the Rotary Club, the Lions Club, the Kiwanis Club, the PTA. Uh, the more Those people aren't government we have, functions. They are all government functions. Oh, get out of here. If you're in the school council, yeah, I'm PTA, I'm man, king of the earth. That's curriculum. me. Government you know, boards. He's, there, you're saying the Rotary the, Club is a government board? The more board? people we have involved in building up our city, the better we are as a community. Stupidest right. thing I've ever heard in my life. Illegal alien in a government job. They're criminals. You want to change all that, change the title. Let's change the law. Let's remove the illegal alien from law. It's there, you know, illegal alien, illegal immigrant in a government job. The sentence doesn't make any it's sense. It's not a government Ray. job, it's a government board. Who cares? are not jobs. Yeah. And by the way, all these folks pay taxes. They are ill, I don't give a they damn should have they a right on their head. And ability They're to illegal. Say what those taxes. They're illegal. Bill, we're going to let you punctuate it. So uh, the more of, of these kinds of uh, rights or opportunities that you provide, I think it uh, lessens the, uh, the, what it means to be a citizen. Thank you. And uh, that's a concern for me. But, you know, we have in San Francisco already that in San Francisco, local elections, immigrant status doesn't matter. You can vote. And I, I would argue, Bill, that what lessens being a citizen more is when people don't honor the Constitution of the United States. That's a core document that when you become a citizen, you fully appreciate and embrace. All right, and when you guys, become a guys, citizen. Guys, Absolutely. we got to wrap. Well, hey, I can't. Hey, I, Phil, I they're going to continue. That. I got to read the <laughs> teleprompter. Coming up, thank you guys. Coming up, more fallout for PG&E as Governor Newsom is demanding refunds.